In this video sequence, we're going to be going through the Sherline uh, part number 1030 four jaw independent cell, uh, chuck, the 3.1 inch version. We'll start by opening the box and going through everything that's in there and what all the parts are for. Instruction sheets, by all means, please read through them because they give you a very detailed description of how this is done and I am actually going to be going through this when we demonstrate how to center uh, a piece of uh, work for you in the, in, the, in the chuck. Everything comes nicely wrapped in the oil paper. It's your four jaw chuck. The jaws are all closed up and it comes with an Allen wrench. And it's very simple. Open up the jaws. Each one is individual. Just like that. Now to make this a little bit easier, uh, we do provide the 532nd Allen wrench. However, I would highly recommend you either use or invest in our T-handle. This makes life a lot easier when you're centering your workpiece in the three jaw or in the four jaw chuck, excuse me. And a continuation, what we're going to do here is we have to get a rough guesstimation of where the center is. And you can see on the on the jaw on the chuck, it does have these radius rings, which kind of give you an idea of, of concentricity. We're using a piece of five eighths inch steel, and we're just going to open up the jaws a little bit at each uh, each time uh, until it drops in and then we'll snug it up and you'll see how I do that. Just use the, what I'm using here to start with is the mid-range of the first ring. I'm putting the, the outside radius edge of this jaw halfway out on this first, uh, this first ring. I'll go a little farther. There we go. And what I do is I just hold it and just bring them each one in a little at a time. Until it grabs hold. Once it grabs hold and it isn't going to come out, snug each one down just a little bit. And mount your chuck. Now on the four jaw versus the three jaw, you want to use your Allen wrench to tighten it because there is no tommy bar hole actually in the chuck. Now if you spin it, you can see that it is, I actually got it pretty close, um, but you can see it is slightly off and we'll true that in using an indicator. Now this is a whole new area uh, that I really am just going to touch on um, because what's available for holding devices and uh, dial test indicators is, is almost infinite. Um, I'll just uh, demonstrate using what I've been using for the last 20 years. I use the Brown and Sharp Best Test Indicator. I've had them for 20 years. Um, they're about mid-range on the price and quality scale of indicators. There's everything from very cheap uh, um, uh, import to extraordinarily, extraordinarily expensive Swiss. And it's up to you as to, as to what you want to invest in your measuring tools but quality and uh, accuracy is directly proportional to cost, unfortunately. Same with the, uh, the indicator holder. This is an SPI, uh, one of the uh, last Swiss-made SPI holders, and it's just a magnetic base. It's got a, a switchable magnet, which holds it steady, and it is fully articulated and lockable. Mount your indicator. And 
And what you want to do here is have, so the indicator tip is dragging in the direction you're turning the, uh, the, the indicator, or the, the chuck. Lock it down and find a nice happy medium and try to get it on top of your workpiece. That'll give you a, re a little bit better reference as when, when you start moving the jaws back and forth where it's a little easier to gauge where it is rather than if you have your indicator at an angle. Okay, from here, I have it just slightly above um, the workpiece and use the, the holding fixture to slowly bring it down until you get a little bit of reading. And then see where it is. Okay, I have quite a bit of movement. You can actually even go a little bit farther down. Okay, what we start doing now is we figure out which jaws are high and which jaws are low. Okay, this is the highest jaw right here. So the work piece has to be brought down. And the way we do that is the opposite jaw, you release it just a little bit. Back it off a little bit, go back to top center, and tighten this one in. And what that does is you're shifting the work piece towards center. This will take a few times, and this is a very learned process, but over time, you should be able to pull this in very quickly. Okay, I'm, I'm right at about five thousandths uh, total run out. Okay, and she's between two jaws, so we kind of got to do both of them uh, one at a time to pull the angle in a little bit. Okay, so we loosen the opposite. Now we got it back up to top. Once you get it within a couple thousandths, then you can just start tightening them down to firm the workpiece in. And that usually will bring you to absolute center. Okay, right there, I've got less than a half a thou run out. And by all standards, that's good to go.